All right, man. I, uh, first and foremost, man, I just want to get all praises to y'all. Vashem, y'all shy. I'm just going over a video. Deacon Sakari or Deacon... De Deacon Ha Ha. We go call him Deacon Ha Ha, man. Or Deacon Hakat. That's a, that's a lot of what this this brother been doing, man. Um, I'm calling Deacon Ha Ha because a lot of what this stuff... <laughs> a lot of <clears throat> stuff that this brother been doing... Has been real funny, and he's been going out real sad. Now, uh, <clears throat> the brother went to address certain things that was put out on one of my uh, feeds, on one of my videos that I put out on Clubhouse like a year ago. And, you know, brother's been watching the page. So <clears throat> what happened was a brother tried to do a commentary on it. <laughs> so we go see how this brother went with the commentary and we go have just have a look at it. Look at this. Leron has confounded the brother. But again, like I said, it's deceptive. Let's let's get it all in context. Right. So I want to play it again and let's just analyze what's being done and said here. Of the Gentiles. Coming back to save Israel, time of the Gentiles become in off the field. That's the, that's talking about the kingdoms of the beast that it's talking about. So when if we all, so so if we all fall short of the glory, all meaning everybody, then why is the Lord only turning ungodliness from Jacob? Wait, hold on. Now, now that's a good question, but of course, Laron never answered it. <laughs> If everybody feels short of the glory and they all need to be restored, why does it say he's only coming to turn ungodliness away from Jacob? Very good question. That's Isaiah 59, 19, and 20. And then the Apostle Paul reiterates this in, um, in, uh, in the book of Romans. Very good question. Laurent skated and slipped and dipped past that right let's keep going <clears throat> well push back if deacon <laughs> if that's the case and you just admitted that the brother from iuic which is deacon Adiel, that's who we're talking to um if Laurent skated and slipped past it how do you explain zachariah chapter 2 and 11 <clears throat> being in question right now. Laurent literally went to Zechariah chapter 2 and 11. So if he skated and skipped past it, how is Zechariah 2 and 11 in question right now? That doesn't make any sense. But let's see what let's see what Zechariah chapter 2 and 11 says. And then we can go to uh, Isaiah chapter 59 and 20. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's do that. Right? Let's do that. go to Isaiah remember because the this was the question so let's go to let's go to let, and let's see if this is excluding other nations the, just because we're about to read this in Isaiah doesn't mean that this is excluding anybody and let's just prove that so again Isaiah chapter 59 right <clears throat> now look at what it says right it says <clears throat> And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgressions in Jacob, saith the Lord, right? And, and Salakia, so like, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, Salakia, so like, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of of thy seeds, seed, saith the Lord from henceforward forever. Now, this is dealing with the children of Israel. Why does why do people, you know what? Why, why do people want to give and make every passage that we see about the Israelites about the other nations? The Most High speaks about the other nations in the fashion that he speaks about them. And he also speaks about the Israelites in the fashion that he speaks about the Israelites. Why do y'all, why do people constantly try to conflate what the Most High is doing with Israel to the other nations if he's not speaking to that? But the Most High did speak to something. What did he speak to? Zechariah chapter 2 and 11. 
which which is what Laron is exactly finna go to. So this was up in the question. Why is the Most High only turning ungodliness away from Jacob? That was in question. Let's get back to that. Now watch this. I got you. Now watch what it says here. Now, this is Zechariah 14. You see, he coming back to save Israel. If he did not come back to save Israel, then you clearly see that all of Israel wouldn't have been saved. They would have been destroyed by these nations here. Now, watch what it says here. This is so somebody saying that biblical war zone is Laron's room, which is okay. I guess it's, that's Laron's room. That's fine. Like I said, I'm not on Clubhouse. I got. I ain't. I ain't. Listen, this is no shot at brothers who are on Clubhouse. But I got a real life. Or I guess it's Shabar's room. Somebody's saying Shabar's room. Somebody's saying it's G Con's room. But uh I, I don't know. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Biblical War Zone is uh Laron room. Uh, he's the founder of that room. Whoever else is a mod, it's also their room too. It's also the, the same book, Zechariah 2 and 11. Look what it says right here. And many nations should be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. <laughs> you laughing. So again, <clears throat> Zechariah chapter two and eleven. So did I did 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 Isaiah chapter fifty nine and twenty exclude or change the prophecy from I uh Zechariah chapter two and eleven, which is what I'm gonna get here in a second. No, it didn't. So the question was, well, if the other nations go be saved or whatever, why is the father only turning ungodliness away from Jacob? So, <clears throat> right, let's go to Zechariah chapter 2 and 11. And let's just get that. <clears throat> Excuse me, Shalakia. Because this is the question, right? Why would he do that? Why, why would the most high? Say, well, I'm going to turn ungodliness away from Jacob and uh, as for the other nations, they're going to be wicked. No, we and, and, and in this same life, Deacon had already admitted that the other nations was going to be serving God and worshiping him. How do you worship God? By keeping the commandments of the most high God, having fear of God. man. So we already know that ungodliness will not only be turned from Israel like Isaiah is exclusively talking about, but and from the other nations. And for no other reason, Zechariah was brought up. Right? That's why Zechariah was brought up. And for no other reason, man. So let's get Zechariah chapter 2 and 11. <clears throat> right? It says, uh, Salakin, let me get that. Let me uh, start at verse 10. Zechariah 2 and 10. It says, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of you, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of you. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the holy land and shall come choose Jerusalem again be silent O all flesh before the Lord for he is rasped up out of his holy habitation and then and it says uh when um when the righteous rule the people rejoice man that's why all flesh is shut up because wickedness has turned from everybody <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 2 right look at what Isaiah says Isaiah chapter two and three, and many people shall go and say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. I mean, come on, man, this is, this is clear. Look at what, look at what it says right here in verse five. Oh, house of the, of Jacob, come ye, let us walk in the light of the Lord, man. So um, clearly we can see what Laron is talking about and we can clearly see demonstrated by book, chapter and verse, how the other nations will be turned <laughs> from their sins. And for no other reason, we got the New Testament and we show how we can see all those fulfillments in Christ. Yeah, we can see how we can see them fulfillments in Christ. How when the law went out and the light went out and Paul went to go teach them other nations, 
And the apostles, they was being turned from their wickedness right there. That's what that's talking about. But nevertheless, let's get back to the video. Please, of the gym. So, as you guys see, we'll come back there. We'll come back there, right? I want to share my screen real quick. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. I'm going to pull it up. And this is just for edification for the body, right? I don't know the brother's response. What he said, what his rebuttal was, because I didn't I didn't see it. I didn't. Yeah, th this was a highlight. Like, Deacon, you put up highlights all the time. You literally create videos <clears throat> and you put highlights up on how you deemed that you've cut somebody. Knock it off, bro. Respectfully. <laughs> see it, you know? So I can only kind of go over it. Uh, with y'all today, right? And they're laughing, like I said, it's very childish laughing like they did something. Now, I did, I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I used to be like that. <laughs> man, it's coming from the guy that just read a Bible scripture and slapped the white man and laughed about it. But all right, whatever. All time ago, what they accuse us of doing, y'all. He did what they accuse us of doing. Reading one verse, abusing context, and ripping things out of context. So, I want to read this and then I want to show y'all something. I want to read this and I want to show y'all something. Matter of fact, before we read this, if that is a brother from IUIC or not, this is for everybody. This is for everybody. G. G Coon, the black, the B L A C C, the bootlicking coon Christian. <clears throat> I'm just trying to see uh, where is he going. Hold on. So you guys got to understand this. We're going to go back to Zechariah 2 so you guys can understand what it means when the Lord says he's going to have compassion on the heathen or the heathen's going to be his people. That doesn't mean they're going to be a chosen people. That means he's not going to be judging them because they'll be subjugated to his law, statutes, and commandments and committing worship to him. <clears throat> so exactly. You hear what he just said? They're going to be subjugated, subjugated to his law, statutes and commandments. Right. So, of course, this is the reason we know that without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> right. In the Bible. Paul went out to these Gentiles. Acts chapter nine and 15. Right. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings and the children of Israel. This is a fact, man. Paul went out to do these things. We are but deacons on that mission. The other nations won't be getting judged. Right, deacon, that's literally what you just said. Let's get that. But it still will not. They're going to be a chosen people. That means he's not going to passion on the heathen. Or the heathen's going to be his people. That doesn't mean they're going to be a chosen people. That means he's not going to be judging them because they'll be subjugated to his law, statutes, and commandments and committing worship to him. But it still will not be equality. Yeah, but Deacon, that don't even make any sense. First and foremost, let me just get this real quick. Right? This is what I want to... Because, again, that don't make any sense. If, if, if he's not going to be judging them... Look, Romans chapter... Let me get Romans real quick. Romans 8 and 1. There's th there's therefore no condemnation. Oh, let me get that. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is what the doctrine was. And this is what Paul was teaching the Israelites and the Gentiles, man. So you just admitted that the most I won't be judging. Meaning, you know what condemnation is? Judgment. So there is no condemnation. So the Israelites and the other nations won't have any judgment going on. Why won't they be having judgment going on? Because the way to get them into the kingdom and the only way through that door is Christ. That's a fact. That's why there isn't any condemnation and judgment to them. Now, let's get Proverbs chapter uh, <clears throat> 9 and 10 real quick. Since that's on my head. Proverbs chapter 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, right? Look at this, man. Because you just said out of your own mouth that they was going to be uh, learning the way that they, keep, keep, they won't be getting judged. You want to know why? 
Proverbs chapter nine and nine, give instruction to a wise man and he will and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Man. Right. So we already know by your own admission. These other nations are going to be subjugated to these exact ways. You know what that sounds like? The most high calling them his people. Why is the most high calling uh, the other nations his people? In Zechariah chapter 2 and 11, for no other reason, because they're not going to be doing wickedness, man. And they have accepted our Messiah. This isn't a conversation. This isn't a conversation about hierarchy and all of this and that and this and that. We ain't talking about none of that, bro. We is talking about salvation. And I'm not, I don't hold the stances, Leron. Uh, hold. I'm simply talking about where you are in error at and what it is that you're talking about. Now let's get Ecclesiastics chapter 17 real quick. Is it 17 or is it 11? It's like it. I think it's in the Apophrica book. So, like, yeah, I'm going to come back to that one. I think it's in the Apophrica book, and I ain't got that one pulled up real quick right right now. <clears throat> let me get, uh, let me get, let me see what I want. Let me get Psalms real quick. Right, look, look, look at what Psalms 19 and seven says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the mind or heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together man all right now this is this, <laughs> this is what's so crazy because you just admitted that these other nations again will be subject sub subjugated to these exact ways and ecclesiastics is in in, in Sirach chapter 17 and 11 anybody can get this that says uh that the laws and statutes and commandments is a heritage to israel now them that's the same heritage that the other nations by deacon's own admission is going to partake of man that's what Deacon just said out of his own mouth. Let me get that again. Decades ago in this truth. Okay? So, you guys got to understand this. We're going to go back to Zechariah 2 so you guys can understand what it means when the Lord says he's going to have compassion on the heathen or the heathen's going to be his people. That doesn't mean they're going to be a chosen people. That means he's not going to be judging them because they'll be subjugated to his law, statutes and commandments and committing worship to him. But it still will not be equality. They will be serving be the Israelites, be subjugated to the Israelites and for a thousand years be enslaved to the Israelites. And for a thousand years. So even if you want. So look, first and foremost, there's going to be no bondage for no thousand years, man. First and foremost, and let's say if let's say let's say this, let's say I entertain the fact that it was going to be hardcore bondage for a thousand years and this and that nature. Satan's going to be bound, so no wickedness is going to be going on. So we could throw that out of the window. So now, what do you do with that? And then, what do you do? How there's a, there's a time limit, a thousand years, and after a thousand years, Satan is going to be loose. And then after that, the kingdom of God comes down, which is salvation that salvation when there's no more death when the most high is take wiping away every tear from every and, and um tear from everybody's eyes man that's in revelations but we're gonna get that too we're gonna get that we're gonna get that we're gonna get that i think that's revelations 21 or 4 or something like that um we're gonna get that though and we're gonna examine that but let's let's get this real quick let's see what he says so do not let a christian try to conflate that or try to compare the two because it's not. Laron is the same individual who says, and this is what all you Israelites need to know if you're on um, Clubhouse debating and you run into G Khan or Shabar. G Khan actually believes, watch this, y'all, watch this. G Khan believes that the heathens are going into servitude 
to the Israelites in the in the kingdom of heaven for the first thousand years. Let me say that again. This Christian apologist, G. Khan, who was working on Volcamalone's plantation, he, and I'm going to show you guys in this video right now. This is our conflation. This, what does this got to do with Zechariah chapter 2 and 11 where God is calling him his people? He just said, oh, well, that just means they're going to be have his ways in this. But, you know, another news, g -Con believe, though, they're going to, um, you know, be slaves in the kingdom. So how do they get salvation? Well, what Deacon is doing is conflating his ideology with Laurent's. Laurent subscribes to, well, yeah, we can see for a certain period uh, there's going to be a millennium reign. And after that millennium reign, salvation is coming forever and ever. So, Deacon, what are you talking about, brother? But, yeah, we go get to that, though. We are going to get to that. But I just want to get something real quick. Let me go to Revelations chapter 14. Because, again, the other nations won't be getting judged, right? Look. Real quick. And then we go go back to Revelations to deal with some stuff that Deacon go say. And after that, I'm going to end this. Uh, Revelations chapter 14 uh, and 12. Look at this. Revelations chapter 14 and 12. Is this is this what I want? <clears throat> Revelations 14 and 12. There we go. Here's the patience like it. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And of the faith, Jesus Christ. So the other nations, again, you want to know why the other nations aren't being judged? Because they're going to have the faith in the commandments of the Lord and of Jesus Christ himself, man. That's why, for no other reason. This is quite simple. Simply being laid out. And again, Deacon already admitted this by his own admission. Now, I want to get another verse real quick. I want to go to Ephesians. Because, again, uh, <laughs> I don't want this to be no mystery. Ephesians chapter 2 and 11. Theref therefore, well, I mean, so like it. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who is called uncircumcision, who are called uncircumcision by the which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So people that are Jews are calling the cir certain people uncircumcised. How do you identify people that aren't circumcised? You identify that by the circumcision, the circumcision whereby of who? Israel. Now, Paul is saying this. Wherefore, remember you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Now, these are why, why are you remembering being a Gentile in the flesh? Because there's a conversion to Christ. You all one in Christ Jesus. So, yeah, of course, you're a Gentile. And, of course, we know there's a hierarchy. These Gentiles are converting over to Judaism. That shows a hierarchy in itself. What's a hierarchy got to do with salvation? Oh, that's what I thought. Nothing. Uh, where, it has nothing to do with salvation. Any nation of people forsaking their law, statutes, and commandments, and heritage, and coming to the Israelites, Right? That's an understanding of a hierarchy. That's an understanding of knowing whatever it was that I was doing ain't it. This is it. Right? That's all that is. Me change a, a Gentile change in this life, not being a pedophile, a thief, or a murderer. That has everything to do with salvation. Period, point blank. And anything other than that is of the devil. And that's a fact. So it says, wherefore, remember that you in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Now, this is the same brother Paul who wrote Romans chapter 9 and said this. I say the truth, I lie not, and my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow, for I wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my kinsmen, my brethren, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. So his kinsmen and his brethren, according to the flesh, are Israelites, and we know that. So why in Ephesians, according to to, right, let's go back to Ephesians. In 2 and 11, he's clearly showing right here, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh 
who are called uncircumcised by the which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. This is a clear distinction of who we can see that who, who Paul's qualifying an indefinite article of who these Gentiles are. By reason of custom and of context, we can clearly see who these people are. And then he goes to call the people that are in the flesh Israelites. He literally says that. So, I mean, this is a clear distinction here. Nevertheless, why am I here? Verse 12. In that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope than without God in the world. Now, that's quite interesting, right? Uh, um, I'm going to tell you all why that's interesting. Uh, because we know for a fact um, that the Most High has made what, what what did the Most High tell um, the Israelites, right? He told him that he was going to restore his covenant. That way the Israelites wouldn't be consumed. I, I believe that's in Malachi. Where is that in Malachi? Uh, let me get that. Esau, we ain't talking about the borders of Esau. Uh, we could get that. That's another subject. I'm trying to look for that. Uh, where is that? Uh, in Malachi, where it talks about um. Uh, uh, where where it brings up how the Most High um is gonna not forsake His covenant with the Israelites. Let me see. Now I got one uh you know what I mean? So yeah, uh Psalms uh one fourteen and nineteen. He 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 saw if this word in the Jacob in statutes and his judgments on the Israel, he has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known. Him. So my thing is this. If the Most High has made an everlasting covenant with the Israelites in Malachi. Uh, hey, man, what's that? What? Where is that in Malachi, man? I got to find that. Uh, and in Malachi, it says um, that uh, the Israelites won't be consumed. That he. Hold on. Yeah, Malachi 3 and 6. I am the Lord, so like it, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye the sons of Jacob are not consumed. So how's the Most High going from putting his law, statutes, and commandments in Israel, right? To, to not knowing any other nation of people. Then he tell you that I'm the Lord thy God, I change not, that the, wherefore the sons of Jacob won't be consumed. To coming all the way over here to Ephesians chapter 2. And it left. No, Ephesians chapter two, saying that um, that in time past you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, how could these be Israelites when we just went to two testaments in the Torah substantiating that how that's not true. The most High changed not. And he's always, he has not dealt so with any other nation concerning who he gave his law, statutes and commandments and priesthood to. In fact, that's not going to change because the other nations got to forsake. They, uh, uh, nationhood and come into Israel, Israel's priesthood. And they're in so much being referred to as even Jews practicing Judaism. So how in the heck we see right here, right? In verse uh Salakia, 
In verse 12, that in that time past you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That couldn't be Israelites. Because Paul in Romans 9 just said this, who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption, the glory and the covenants. Who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption, the glory and the covenants, the giving of the law, the services of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. So how in the heck now? It was some people in Ephesians chapter two and 11 who are Israelites that that didn't pertain to. It doesn't make any sense. And we see we have a flawed ideology just by examining that itself. Now, just just to move on, just to go to the entire point of getting here. Right. This was the point that in that time, that in time past, it's like it, that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you are sometimes you are sometimes far off. And made not by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abol abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments. But what we focusing in on right here is that enmity. And that was dealing, of course, with the Gentiles and with that promises that these other nations is allowed to get in on. That's a fact. That middle wall of partition is destroyed. And look, I've broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the laws of commandments containing ordinances, for to make in himself twine one new man, so making peace, right? You know what I'm saying? That's coming into that perfection. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain enmity, whereby meaning you can only come into God. This is even proven. You can only come into this perfection, into this salvation through Christ by putting off that old man. That's a fact. And come and preach peace, which is the gospel to you, which were afar off and to them that were nigh. You know, the people that was afar off to the people that he say wouldn't call his people no more, the Gentile. I mean, th that he say wouldn't that he wouldn't call his people. Period. That wasn't his people. Salakia, the Gentiles. For though him, for through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father, right? So why is it saying we both? It's saying the nation of Israel and the other nations. Again, the Most High has never forsake this promise with the Israelites, and that's a fact. That's a lie. Anybody saying anything else is lie. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fit framely together grow up unto a holy temple in the Lord. That's a fact. Same uh, temple that Deacon himself said the Gentiles won't be getting judged and uh, worshiping. Yep, sure did. Let's get back to this. Right here from years ago, when we put him on the hot seat, he believes that the heathens will be in servitude to the and again, Israelites during the millennial if there was, reign of Christ. And even if there was some servitude going on for the millennium reign, that's not salvation. So let's get down to... Uh, I want to uh, go to a certain timestamp. Um, um, let me see something real quick. I think it was that. Are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall is not the kingdom of heaven. This is what act like this is all from years ago. I want you guys to hear this closely. Take a look. I started at the wrong minute mark, even though that was good. But let's listen to this. Watch this. He, he was passing through their flesh. And when he came, you know I'm saying they, they, a lot of them stumbled at Christ. The majority of them did. Okay. Let's, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Do you believe that 
there will be slavery in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, not in the kingdom of heaven. In the uh, in the thousand year reign, I do believe there will be uh, servant. Thousand year reign. So you hear? So he's saying in the thousand year reign there will be servitude. Why don't you go on Clubhouse and teach that instead of trying to act like this is all inclusive salvation? Uh, Laron has taught that on Clubhouse, and first and foremost, he just differentiated the millennium reign. Sure, there's some servitude, but in the kingdom of God, which is salvation, there isn't any servitude. So let's see if Deacon can debunk that. Let's let's see what happens here. There's some all-inclusive salvation, rather. But he's trying to say, oh, it's not captivity, it's a servitude. And he's trying to say that the thousand-year reign is not uh, the kingdom of heaven. The thousand-year reign is not the kingdom of heaven. This is what he's saying. But in Revelation chapter 11, watch this. Let's see when the kingdom of heaven starts. Revelation 11. Let's see when the kingdom of heaven starts. Does it start after a thousand year reign? Revelation 11 and 15. Look at this. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever. The seven trumpet happens Yahweh Shai comes back at the seven trumpet so as soon as he comes back not a thousand years after he comes back as soon as the seven trumpet is sounded the kingdom of heaven start the kingdom of God starts and so according to your own admission heathens will be in captivity servitude in the kingdom of heaven now we teach for a thousand years then we'll be over them and they'll be subjugated, but they just won't be in hardcore bondage, but they will not be equal to Israelites. Let's keep going. Yeah, that was terrible. That was real bad. For one, he just conflated hardcore bondage and all this stuff to salvation. Salvation is being in the kingdom of God repented. So again, what you just did there was bad. Again, there's no... Um, look, let me, let me show y'all something real quick. Right. Let me just, let me just go to this. Right. Let's go. Let's go to where he went to. What was that? Um, revelations 11 and 15. Let me go to that. Show y'all something. Let's see. Revelations 11 and 15. Let's just go to the same text he went to. Let me show y'all why that was real bad. He, he, he's making a stance to say, Oh, well, no, Christ is going to rule forever. So that is the kingdom of God. No, Laron is saying this. There's a thousand year reign. So the fact that you hear and see in a thousand years can be demonstrated. There's going to be a thousand year reign. So guess what? During that thousand year reign is going to be peace on earth. Satan is going to be um, uh, uh, bound up. Right. Let's and 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 and, and uh, we go get that real quick. Um, Revelations chapter eleven and fifteen. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were and there were great voices in heaven saying, "The kingdoms of the world are become like the kings kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall regain. It's like and He shall reign forever." And ever now that's a fact Christ will reign forever and ever but is what does that got to do with the thousand year reign we know there's going to be peace on earth and after peace there's going to be um Satan is going to be loosened and after Satan is loosened then every tear and all pain and suffering is going to be uh gone away and the book of life is going to be open that's salvation so sorry deacon you are conflating that's a fact now look at this right Let's let's just look. Um, cause you're not being honest. And it says in in four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks, uh, we give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art which thou so like you, which art in waste and art come because thou hast taken 
to the thy great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry and there and it's like it and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead in the time of the dead that they should be judged. Now, Deacon just said that the nations wouldn't be judged because they'd be keeping the commandments. You cut yourself and that thou shouldst give so like it, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear and to them that fear thy name, small and great. And should is destroy them, which destroy the earth. So this isn't talking about the other nations. This is a fact. We got a whole time period after the millennium reign. Things are going to happen. Other nations, right? Which keep the judgments is going to keep and come into salvation and be saved. Right? Revelations chapter 21 and 24. Let's get a little bit after that. We go dib and dab in this and, and dissect what he said because he lied. Revelations 21 and 24. Look at what it says. Revelations 21 and 24. So like it. 21. Look at this. Yeah. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no light there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie by which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, Deacon, if you hold a stand to say, well, oh, no, nah, man, we can see that Christ came to rule forever. Well, this could just cut the heck out of you, too, because this said nothing defiled is even going to enter in the kingdom. So why would you even have to use brutality or even do anything crazy like a, a, any nation of people will be defiled when Revelations is saying that no other nation will be defiled? And by your own admission, you just said that was the kingdom of God. So again, you, you just lied and got cut again really bad, bro. This is bad, man. <laughs> this is bad. Let's prove again and substantiate. Um, wait, hold on. Let me get let me let me go to Isaiah real quick. I forgot about Isaiah. You know what I mean? Because this brother's lying. Now look at what Isaiah chapter 20 say. Now, Isaiah chapter 20, verse 2. So like, yeah, is this, is this what I want? This ain't what I want. It's like, yeah, this ain't what I want. Let me get it. Uh, I think it's Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Look at, look at what, look at this. Open ye gates that the righteous nation, which keep the truth may enter in. You see that? That will keep him in perfect peace whose, may, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you, man. Tr look, trust in the Lord forever and the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. This is the same for everlasting kingdom that Deacon say Christ is going to rule. And I do believe Christ is going to rule the everlasting kingdom. But the way Deacon is putting it is not cohesive or hermeneutically with the scriptures. Is what we plainly and what I'm plainly pointing out here. We don't see that. Deacon is trying to, oh well, or if this, if if, if there's a if there isn't a difference in the kingdom, we do see a difference. There's going to be a thousand years, so that means there's going to be a mark to where we see peace. We don't see peace. Then there's going to be everlasting peace, and every nation of the earth that's chosen and called is going to partake of that peace, and that's a fact. That's a fact. What are we doing here? Let me go to um. Let me go to another scripture, man. This is crazy. This brother's getting. I I, I don't know what to tell y'all, and I don't know what y'all been reading, but y'all really got to start reading these scriptures and really start praying, right? Revelations chapter twenty one. It's like at twenty. In uh, in um, Revelations chapter twenty, and um.
20 and 11. Right? And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fleed away. And there was so like it, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. Uh oh, it sounds like salvation to me. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, this is the same kingdom that Deacon just said was forever. Well, in this same kingdom, you just said that the nations wouldn't be getting judged because they'd be serving God. So that means that they're saved. And another book was open, which was the book of life, right? And the dead were judged out of those things. Now, Deacon, you already admitted that they weren't getting judged. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, and the dead in hell were delivered up the dead, which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works, and death in hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Y'all hear that? So whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So if you wasn't cast into the lake of fire, you obtained salvation. All right. That's a fact. So all this stuff that Deacon is coming up with and making up, isn't sound and it's not of the Lord thy God. It's not. You're excluding self. You're hiding your light. Christ said, don't hide your light and deacon. You're hiding your light. Revelations 21, 4. Right? Let's get that. Because he said uh, there won't be um, there isn't a differentiation. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The Gentiles didn't build that up. And as I heard a great voice out of heaven, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. That's Yahweh, right? And and God or Yahweh, right? Is that what y'all say? Shall wipe away all their tears from their e from their eyes. It's like it. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. But after a thousand years, there's going to be pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all new. I make all things new. And he and he said unto me, right. So like you're right for these words are true and truthful. Now, this is salvation. Any millennium kingdom that any Israelite is talking about is not any kingdom that Christ was preaching unto salvation, which is the gospel of peace. That's a fact they're conflating and they honestly don't know the scriptures. And that's a fact. So with that, I'm going to get all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, Shalom.